Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be getting 500 kills to master the AS Val PDW in Battlefield 4. This is an engineer exclusive weapon and it's honestly an extremely good gun if you know how to use it. One of the unique features of this weapon is that it has a built-in suppressor that cannot be removed. This means that you're always going to be concealed on the minimap unless you've actually been spotted by the enemies and it's going to allow you to do a lot of cool covert things like arm this MCOM here without the team figuring it out for a little while. Obviously now that the MCOM's armed they're going to be swarming here but they don't actually know my location. Now because you have a full time suppressor on this weapon you don't get to modify the barrel attachment so you're kind of stuck with the bullet velocity which isn't too fast but then again considering that it's a suppressed weapon that's okay. It does incredibly high damage per second in close quarters and this is going to allow you to absolutely dominate one to two targets per magazine. The rate of fire is 900 rounds per minute with a maximum damage of 30. This is an incredibly high damage per second, in fact it makes it the highest damaging per second gun in the entire game of Battlefield 4. Close quarters if you get a full mag of an AS Val, you are set up to win any 1v1 fight no problem. Of course pump action shotguns pose their own kind of threat, but in terms of damage per second for any sort of full auto weapon, this one wins hands down. Now having 30 damage as a maximum multiplier is very interesting because it still requires you to get a 4 shot kill on a full health target in order to kill them. Much the same as a gun that does 25 damage maximum, the difference being that a lot of people run defensive perk. In fact if you've been playing CTE recently you'll notice that uh, spotted targets with defensive perk have a little shield above them and a lot of the spotted targets in this game have shields because defensive perk is a very good perk to run with. It reduces the amount of damage you take and it makes it so that guns that do 25 damage maximum in close quarters are not going to get that four shot kill. You're going to need a five shot kill to down your opponent. However this does not affect the AS Val as much. You're still going to get that four shot kill with or without the defensive perk in close quarters which is definitely a nice way to run you don't have to worry too much about whether or not your target has armor or not as you get further and further away from your target the damage on this gun goes down pretty significantly all the way down to 16 so then defensive perk has a little bit more of an influence but at the same time your rate of fire is definitely going to make up for it and you should have no problem downing opponents at medium range with this weapon long range is going to be a little bit trickier just because the drop off and the bullet velocity is going to make it very hard just to hit your target. Now although the AS Val is an absolute beast of a gun doing such massive damage it is still something that has a little bit of a learning curve. You're going to need to know what the drawbacks of this weapon are because they might get you killed if you're not ready for them. The first one is that it's only got a 20 round magazine and if you're shooting 900 rounds per minute with a 20 round mag you're going to be out of that mag very quickly. So don't waste your shots with this gun. The next weird thing about this gun is that it has a huge discrepancy between short reload and long reload. If you manage to reload this gun with just one bullet left over, at least a bullet left in the chamber, then you get a 1.95 second reload, which is incredibly fast and it's great for close quarter combat. However, if you reload this gun and you don't have any bullets at all left over, you're going to get a 2.9 second reload, which is pretty much an entire second longer, and that can definitely screw you over in close quarters. So just be aware of that and make sure you think about that before you reload the gun or before you perhaps waste every single last bullet left in your weapon. And then finally this gun is very temperamental. You can't just take it out in the field, put whatever attachment you want on there and expect to do really well. This gun has an extremely high first shot recoil which is why I like to run with an angled or folding foregrip to help reduce that. It has a 3.5 times first shot recoil multiplier which is just insanely high. That means your first shot is almost going to recoil four times as much as your follow-up shots. So it makes it very hard to do accurate bursting with your follow-up shots. You're just going to miss a lot of your targets. So I highly recommend the angled foregrip and tap firing this weapon a lot, especially for long range. Close quarters go full auto by all means, but longer range you're just going to want to do tiny little tap firing aim for the head and you will be just dropping targets all day. Now like all weapons in Battlefield they usually excel in an environment that is really tailored for them and the AS Val is not an all around awesome weapon. It's going to be very good for a lot of medium to close range situations but longer ranges is something that you're going to want to avoid. Also you really want to take advantage of the fact that it's suppressed so big wide open maps where you're around a lot of teammates is definitely not where you want to take this gun. You want to get into maps like Pearl Market here 
here that's going to have a lot of stealth potentials, a lot of flanking potentials, and really take advantage of the fact that you're going to be able to get up behind people and take out three or four teammates before they even realize that there's an enemy behind them. And especially in very confusing maps, people are going to be using the mini map to acquire most of their targets. And it was funny just to see how many people on Pearl Market I killed in face to face combat where they didn't even shoot their gun once because they were so surprised to actually see me waiting for them. Now again, rather than game mode, it's more about map type. Team Deathmatch generally works unless it's gonna be a very big wide open map with not a lot of good flanking potentials. This gun is all about flanking, catching your opponents off guard. Granted, it's got such high damage potential that you can still win a lot of the firefights in face-to-face -face combat, but you are the engineer class after all because this is a PDW. You're not gonna have a lot of med packs to repair or to heal yourself rather, and so you're gonna need to avoid taking damage in most situations. And frankly, it's kind of unfortunate that this is an engineer exclusive weapon because we would be seeing a lot more people using the ASVAL if it was attached to a class like the support class or the medic class that is much, much more more useful in infantry centric maps. But alas, days of the universal PDW from Battlefield 3 are over, so you're gonna have to make do with your engineer stuff, which is basically a rocket launcher and a blowtorch to, I guess, troll people in infantry centric maps. It can work in vehicle heavy maps, although for the most part, when you're on a vehicle intensive maps, the ranges tend to increase a lot further. So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend the ASVAL as the engineer if you are playing on a big vehicle oriented map. So that's always been the weird trade-off with the engineer. Do you want to use his cool exclusive weapons on vehicle-centric maps and just do terribly? Or do you want to use his cool exclusive weapons on infantry-centric maps and have lots of gadgets that don't really apply too well to infantry gameplay? Something that's kind of cool is that Battlefield Hardline is rebalancing the engineer by giving it the grenade launcher from the assault class. So rather than giving the assault class pretty much all the best gadgets to use on an infantry centric map, they're now divvying it up a bit and people are probably going to be playing the engineer a lot more because that grenade launcher is going to kick ass in terms of dealing with infantry and frankly vehicles as well. Now getting back to the AS Val, something that I would absolutely love to see make a return to this game is the VSS. This is basically Basically just a variation of the same gun but the VSS is designed more for the sniper class and frankly it was one of the cooler guns to have in bad company too I absolutely loved the VSS it was a really fun suppressed sniper rifle and it played way differently now frankly you could try and achieve the same effect by putting a sniper scope on the AS Val but you know it would be cool to have the actual original VSS in the game just to bring back some old fan favorites now here I am defending this hilltop on Zavad 311 it's a rush game. They've already taken out one of our MCOMs, and I know I am really close to that mastery dog tag. So I'm taking advantage of the fact that I'm not popping up on the mini map here. This guy almost gets to me. Luckily, I got my trusty Deagle as backup. And basically, the attacking team just doesn't really know where I am, which is a good thing because I only got 32 health left. And as you'll see me kind of head glitch right up over the mound here, I'm able to get another kill and finally unlock that mastery dog tag with the next guy coming up the road. So is getting the mastery dog tag for the AS Val a difficult feat? Well, certainly getting 500 kills with any gun is going to take you some time, but getting it with the AS Val is definitely one of the easier mastery dog tags that I have gotten in the game. This gun is absolutely a ton of fun to play with and I was averaging 60 plus kills per round you'll see on the scoreboard of this game here that I got over 80 kills in this match. So figuring in an average of 60 kills per round it's really not going to take you too many games to actually master out this weapon. So as usual please let me know in the comments which weapon you would like me to master next. If you check the video description there's a list of available weapons to master and the F2000 is still kind of off limits because I'm waiting for that September patch in which it's going to get some changes. As always guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll See you next time. This is Level Cap signing out. <laughs>